Good morning. So I'll give it one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into um, what we're going to talk about today. So this is the intro into command and we are, it's a three part series. This is part two. So hopefully you received the email from me that gave you the link, the direct link to part one. And so you can always access that on the YouTube channel. So we're just going to get right into it today. Um, but before I do, um, let me open this up first. Can you all see my command screen? Okay, so before we do that, um, get into um, training today, within command itself, what are any follow-up questions that you have from part one or any questions in general about command? Um, before we continue with the applets today. Any specific questions in command that you have? Nope. Okay, so we will get into it. So last time we talked about, and I'm just gonna get out of opportunities. So last time we did just a general dive in in terms of all of the applets, how to navigate in general, um, the marketing um, profile and also the profile. And last time we also talked about contacts. Um, so if you haven't already, I would make sure that you add yourself as a contact. So you would click on this button here, add it. The reason why you would want to do that again is once we get into smart plans, you always want to make sure that you are sent, you are editing a smart plan first testing it on yourself first, double checking, make sure everything's good and then sending it out. So that would be the reason why you wanna add yourself and keep in mind that when you do add yourself as a contact, use a separate email address other than your KW1. So the email that you're using front facing for your agent um, communication, meaning communicating with clients or communicating with KW, do not use that email, use a separate personal email when you're doing that. So let's get into task. So within tasks is just that, this is just a way for you to add um, contact tasks in terms of things that you want to do and or that you need to do on behalf of your client. So you have a contact task that's related directly to contacts. So how you would create a tag is you would click on the Tito button where it says create new task to the right. If you don't see it to the right, then just click and drag our Zoom um, images um, out of the way. And then you would click on create a new task. It's gonna ask you for the task name. Is it all day? Um, if not, you deselect it and then you tell what time it is. I'm just gonna select it now. Um, again, to deselect it, to give it a specific time, you can just deselect it, uncheck it, um, or check it if it's an all day, whatever the due date is, the description, and then any potential hyperlinks. Um, so that's how you would do that. If you wanted to associate this with a contact, you simply click on this and then you search your contact. So I'm just gonna do a random person. Um, so then um, all of the Roberts that I have, so then if I wanted to associate this, this task, contact task with the contact, I simply 
select the one that I want. I've selected Robert, and then I would just um, save it, or excuse me, associate contact, and then finish up, you know, the description if I needed a hyperlink. So this would directly connect for the contact piece only, myself as the agent, or in this case, you, and then any contact or clients that you have in your database, you could also associate them with this create a list. So that's how you would do that. What kind, what kind of task are you talking about? So it could be anything. It could be um, reminding yourself to call them. It could be reminding yourself to do something. Maybe they asked you to water their plants. So then maybe you wanna do this where it reminds you to water their plants. Um, so it could be anything. The only thing that, um, let me rephrase that. Anything outside of the opportunity. So as you are working your client through the sales pipeline, that's a separate form of task. These are just everyday tasks that has necessarily nothing to do with the sales pipeline. Um, maybe it is, you know, you heard something about a potential listing that's coming up and you just want to give them a heads up that in two days, this is going to go live. And I think this is a great property. Um, or maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe you um, want to follow up with them, you know, separately because it's a really good client for their birthday. Maybe you guys are going out, you know, for lunch or, you know, whatever you're doing. So anything outside of the sales pipeline funnel, you would include that in the task. Does that answer your question, Kat? A great question. Okay. So that would be that piece. So then let me go out of here. So that's under the contact task. So now the opportunity task. So this is where you go in, and this is more of the sales pipeline, which we're going to get into a little later, but this is the portion of the sales pipeline where you would see all of the things that you've created within the opportunities portion of it. So there's no field for you to add any task to this because it directly links to the opportunities, which we'll get to at a later date. Comments or questions about that piece of it? Okay, so the next one, um, so that's tasks. So I'll go back so you can see that. And then you can have the option to do completed, archived, expired. So it'll show up all the stuff that I had, you know, in terms of direct context that I had tasks for in my command. Anything that's archived, you can see all of that. Anything that's completed and any tasks that are remaining. So that is the task applet. So let's get into smart grant. So smart plans is a way for you to automate your communication with clients. So there's several different things that you can communicate or there's a myriad of things that you can communicate. The bottom line is you want to automate your communication, i.e. a CRM system for your clients, keeping them in informed and updated. So when you log in or go into smart plans, you have two settings or two views, if you will. You've got my smart plans. This is all the smart plans that you have. If you don't have any, no need to panic. Um, you will begin to add them. And then you have library. So for those of you that are actually in your command now, you would click on library. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit in terms of how to search and the top things that you should start with in terms of for your smart plan only. So, or for your smart plan. So the first thing I wanna call out is that you can search here for any type of smart plan. You can do a drop down where you, you sort by smart plan name or author or description. You can add filters if you want by clicking on the filters. Then it says like three to um, zero to three months three to six, you can add more filters in terms of how you want to see the information. And then over to the right, you have, if you click on view cat, um, category, you select that and it has most used. So I'm gonna select most used because these are the top five smart plans that you wanna make sure that you have. So let's review those. The first one, well, let me explain a little bit what this looks like and what it means. So whenever you are in the library, you'll have the title. In this case, it's the monthly neighborhood nurture. It'll give you a description of the smart plan. It'll tell you when it's published. This is key for you to know. 
this is the number of agents that are using this. And as a best practice, the more agents that are using a smart plan, the more effective it is for you to use. So then the bottom of this, or towards the bottom, you got the number of agents again, you've got their ratings. So this is um, pretty much a 4.5 or four, or excuse me, 4.6 potentially um, in terms of ratings and how the functionality is. So there's three steps involved. I'm gonna show you how to click or view them in just a minute. The duration of time, is 30 days, and then there's one touch, meaning that there's one form of contact or communication. The key thing also that I wanna highlight is anything that's in red is good, meaning that KWRI, which stands for Keller Williams Realty International, they are the authors of this. The one thing that I will say is you wanna look, you wanna look for this when you are troubleshooting. So if you ever see a smart plan and it's not read and it doesn't say Keller Williams author, if you use it and you run into problems, it's going to be less likely that KWRI is going to be able to assist you with figuring out what's going on with that smart plan. And the reason is because as you as an agent can create and publish your own smart plan. And so as an individual agent, when you create a smart plan on your own, which I'll show you how to do that, and then you decide to publish it, meaning that you wanna share it so other people can use it. Sometimes if you run into issues with it, you will have to either redo it and or try to find a, a smart plan that KWRI authored. So I just wanted to be very clear about that. So how you view these is you click on view steps, It'll show you all of the things that are involved in this. So it's, it starts with an HTML or it starts with an email and then there's a delay and this repeats. So that's all it does. It sends an email, there's a 30 delay and then it repeats going back to the monthly neighborhood nurture. So then if you wanted to add this, you would click on add a smart plan here and then it would download and add to your um, portfolio. So that's that piece. Questions about that part of it. If you ever run into a situation where you click on add a smart plan and then this is grayed out and it gives you that red, you know, stop button, that means you already added it. So you can't re-add it. So I just want to call that out. So the top ones that you should have if you don't are the following. Monthly neighborhood nurture should be one that you have. Bi-weekly neighborhood nurture should be another one. Promote my app should be another one. And I'm gonna come back to this. Birthdays is another one. And then the top five rounding out would be quarterly call plan, care calls. And then as a bonus, I would do home anniversary. So those are the top five that you should have automatically underneath your smart plan. So where your smart plans is, you should have those five at the very least already added. If you don't have them, I would encourage you to make that a homework assignment where you go into the smart plans, you go into view category, select most used, and just go through the list. One thing I wanna call out is, go back here and go back to most used. The one that I wanna call out specifically is promote your app. When you put this out there, you want to make sure that you have all of your contact information already done. So making sure that you updated your marketing profile, your mar marketing profile is updated, and then you want to add your app. The thing that I would encourage you to do is you need to decide for yourself, are you going to send text messages out to your clients at any point in time? If you are going to send out text messages, the very first thing you want to do is you want to add to your Twilio, which is a third party app. I will go over that um, really quickly. The second thing is when you're in this app and when you're editing it, so let me go back here so I, I can show you. 
let me do, let's see. The only thing that you can't do is that it, there's no way to really search it. So you kind of have to go through all of these manually. Um, we do have an idea generated to where we're trying to get people to vote on that. So let me see. I've got a lot of them, so just bear with me. Um, so let's see. Here, download my app. There it is. So I'm just gonna click on the edit button. Okay, so this is in the situation where you have added your app information. Um, this one actually is one that I created. So let me not do that one because I don't want to confuse you. So let me just do this one in general. Um, let me just pull this one up. Just for editing purposes. Oh, that's not a good one either. Let's do this. We'll get there. Um, this one I know I, I have got. Oh, this one would be a good one. So here, so when you um, have, you added, let's, let's walk this scenario through. You went into smart plans, you downloaded the smart plan to your library. So now what you wanna do is you wanna edit this information, getting ready to send it out. We're not quite ready to send it out yet, but we're just in the editing phase. So when you actually go to the editing phase for here, the first thing is create a task. It's a delay, and that's the key thing I want to say about smart plans, is if you're going to have multiple things that you're doing in one smart plan, you can only do up to 11, I believe. If you're going to have multiple things, you always need to set a delay in between action items. So if you're going to create a task where you're doing something, then you have to set a delay. Then another task, set a delay. Another task, set a delay another task, set a delay. So when you are editing this, a couple of things I wanna call out, you can go in and change the, you know, the title of this task. Um, you can go in and change the content. If this were something that you wanted to send out, meaning that this is gonna be an email or a text message, you have these function keys here. So let's say this would be, um, and this is actually a great tip for you when you're doing this. So say for example, this one, these are about closing gifts. So then what I would do here is within the name where it says give client closing gift, I would put this in here as a best practice. So see over here where it has the function key. So you click on that and you would want to have your contact name. The reason why you would want to do this, because this is going to pop up as a task for you. You want to make sure that when you're doing it, you have all of the necessary information. So when it comes back to you as a task, it's going to put in your contact's first name. If you want to put the last name, if you want to put their phone number, whatever you want to do, add that information on the back end so that when that task reminder pops up, it tells you the name of the person. If you don't do that, then it's going to be more work for you because then you've got to go back and figure out, especially when you begin to really work your real estate business. And let's say you've got multiple deals going on. You want to make sure that you give yourself enough information. So when you get that task reminder, you've got everything at the touch of your hand or button or very easy to where you can do that. If it were a task where you needed to call someone, then make sure you have the name and then make sure that their phone number is in there. So then you add a phone number. These are the back end things that you're creating a system for to make it easier for you to actually do that task once it pops up. Questions? No questions? How many of you are doing smart plans? How many of you are actually doing smart plans? Can I get a hand, a nod, um, yes? No? I got one shaking of the head no and nobody else is responding. Who else? Yes or no? No? Okay. Um, so these are just a way for you to communicate 
um, with your clients. So that's how you would edit it and you would save it. Remember I talked about adding yourself as a contact. So the first thing you would wanna do is you would save this and then you would click on, there's two ways that you can add people to a smart plan. With inside of the smart plan, you can click on the portrait, if you will, or the contact card. You click on that, and then it's going to say save. It's going to remind me to save. So then from here, I could search the name and then just check the box. And then I'm adding myself to this. So then that means that I'm sending this smart plan out specifically to me, myself. And then you go through the process of add to smart plan. When do you wanna send this out? If this is the test mode, you definitely wanna get it out there now and then confirm. And then it's gonna give me information on Twilio and then you hit confirm and then it's gonna to come to me. So that's how you would test it. That's the first way you test it. The second way to add a smart plan. Sorry, Sorry what was the... Um it said save it and then you click on what? The internet's kind of shaky, so I couldn't hear your words. Sorry, so let me go back in here. I'm just gonna do, let me go here. Let me go back in here to the Dudley one. So then once you save it, I'll just click on save now. Then here where it has the little contact portrait of a person, you click on that. You see that, Kat? Oh, you're muted, so I can't hear you. No, maybe the um, the pictures of everybody are, are yeah, over Yeah, so you'll have to click okay. and drag that over. Yeah, so there's a portrait here that says that's next to save. Oh, okay. And so um, you'll click on that. Then it'll pop up. It'll say who you want to send this to. So I'm just going to do um, myself again, even though I already did it, just so you can see. So then if it, I'm, again, in the test mode only, so then I want to send it to myself. So I'm going to select myself. And then at the bottom, it says add to smart plan. It's going to give me an error message because I already did. Then it's going to say start now or start in the future. Because we're in test mode, because we want to get ready to send this out, we're going to do now and then confirm and then confirm again, and then it's gonna send it out. That's the first way to send it. The second way is this. You go back into contacts. And then within contacts, um, once it pops up, so let's give it a minute because my internet seems to be a little unstable here. Okay, so now that contacts is open, there's a couple of things you can do here. So let's say, let's walk this complete scenario out. I've downloaded my smart plan. I've went in and changed it. You have to change the content first. Do not send a smart plan out um, before you test it. You test it. Now let's say we're ready to go. And my, here we go. So then you can do several things. If it's ready to go and you want to send it out to everyone in your database because you know it's good, you can select this sort button. Well, first of all, let me back up. One thing I need to share. See over here, and you may have to click and drag the images of us out of the way. Does everyone see thumbs up reaction where it says show one of 324? So you want to make sure that in this scenario that you want to send it to everyone in your database, you want to make sure that you have everyone listed here. So you can simply click on this and it'll say you want to see 10 contacts at a time, 25, 50, 100, and I just always default mine to 500. So then I know that I'm getting everybody now. So then when I click on this sort button And my internet is a little slow, so it's going to auto-populate. So then once I click on here, it's going to actually sort all of them. And see where it says selected here, 324? It matches the 324 on this side. So then now I can do a bulk action, and then I can hit select bulk action, click on that drop-down, and this gives me all of the bulk things that I can do. 
So if I want to click here and then um, add to smart plan. Whoops. So add to smart plan, then I could search that smart plan. And this was the Dooley one, I think it was. Let me just, I know this one. Let me redo this because of my slow internet connection. So here we go, let's go back. So then it gives you all of your smart plans and then you can just simply select the one you want, simply select it. Then it's gonna give you an option here. This is very important that you choose correctly here. So you can either start now, you can start at a certain date, or you can stagger it. Here's the tip is the best practice. If you have a smart plan that has multiple things to do, i.e. a task, a call, a text, an email, whatever it is, especially if it involves a phone call that you have to make, it is important that you select the stagger option. And the reason is, is because here's the situation. Let's say you've got 5,000 people in your contact list and you're emailing them. And one of the action items is that you call them. If you don't stagger it, guess what's gonna pop up in your task? Call all of your 5,000 people in one day. That's gonna be like heart attack moment. <laughs> so make sure that whenever you have a smart plan that has multiple things involved in it, steps or tasks, that you stagger it to make sure that you're mindful of your schedule and you can stagger it however you want. You can click on here, you can stagger it for 10 days, 30 days, I think the max is 31. And then that gives you sanity and time to do what you need to do. So does that make sense what I'm saying? Okay. So then I'm just gonna X out of here because I don't wanna do that. But that's how you would do it. Um, let me do one other thing. I'm going to circle back on Twilio and then I'm going to go back into the smart plan in terms of creating your own and then I'll take questions or is there, are, do, do you have any questions right now? So this is the Twilio piece. So again, I'm going to the black horizontal toolbar at the top, my avatar drop down. I'm going to go into settings. Then within settings, these are all of the applications that I can set up. I'm gonna go down to Twilio. The key thing that I wanna say about Twilio is number one, um, it's pennies to the dollar on this. This allows you to send text messaging if you're going to be sending text messages to your clients, you would wanna connect this. It's a two-way process to connect. You hit connect if you don't I already have mine connected. You go through the process of basically purchasing a plan, the least economical um, or the, the most affordable is one that's, I think it's like $3.16 per month. And it gives you the ability to, I think it's 5,000. I can't remember if it's two or 5,000, but it's somewhere in there in terms of the number of text messages that you can send out. Once you do that, once you connect it, you pay for it, then it's going to pop up with an option that says forward, call forward. Now, keep in mind a couple of things about Twilio. Unfortunately, you cannot use your own personal cell phone. So you would have to select a number within Twilio. Make sure that when you select the number, you go through the process. I've seen historically Lanaihi and Oahu as options. I always direct my agents to pick a number that's closest to you island wise. Um, typically, you know, if you have a Honolulu number, um, unfortunately, I've never seen Maui yet, but typically it's Lanahi and Honolulu that are the options. You know, best practice is Honolulu because most people know Honolulu. They may not necessarily know Lanahi. So when your number shows up, it'll be Lanahi. And so Honolulu is all more of a recognized number on the mainland. Um, so then you click on that. What you can do is then you can forward your Twilio number to your personal cell phone. So 
So that's an additional step. It'll be, it'll pop up here. You can't miss it. It'll say something like forward your calls. So then you click on forward and then you type in or put in your cell phone number. It's going to then send you a confirmation code, put that confirmation code in it. And then that way, all of the messages that people send you via Twilio will come directly into your personal cell phone as a text message. Yes. I, um, I don't understand the advantage of using Twilio as opposed to just using your own cell service. Great question. The advantage is this. You can customize um, multiple messages, meaning that instead of typing in all the time, whatever you're trying to send out, especially on a mass communication level, in terms of, let's say, for example, the key thing, let me give you a perfect example. When you are walking your clients through the sales process, there's certain communication that you want to send all the time. And Twilio is a way for you to send the same message every single time with your client because you're creating consistency. So you're basically pre-scripting what you're saying and you're sending it on a mass level. You can do that individually on your cell phone, but it's going to take a little more work because you got to cut and paste right. and do this. Twilio allows you to automate that where you're doing it one time only and you can send it out for years to come. So, so it just kind of puts it into an archive and you can access exactly, it whenever exactly. you need it. Okay, exactly. thank you. So that would be the advantage of it. Great question though. Any other questions? So that would be the Twilio piece to that. And then one more thing about smart plans. So if you decide that you want to use um, or be able to text, send text messages to your clients, the one thing you need to do is when you send out communication, if you decide to do it, send out communication to every person on your contact list, letting them know that, hey, in the future, you may receive you know, a text message from this number. This is my number. So you want to make sure before you do this, you send out communication to your clients to let them know that this is not spam. This is another number for me. So then that way they know that it's coming from you. If you don't communicate that to them in advance, they're going to assume that it's spam. So, and then they're going to delete it. So then they got to go through that whole process of, you know, reconnecting. The only other thing that I will mention um, about this is when you can create your own. So this, we're back in smart plans. We're going to click on create. And you can create whatever you want. I'm just going to say intro into command. So you title it at whatever you want to title. So then you click on the teal button to create. Create. It's going to automatically put you into this um, template form. So here, these are all of the widgets that you can add. So um, hold on. So then if I wanted to make a call, I click on make a call. Remember, you have to set a delay. So I'm going to set a delay. I want to send a, a text message after that, set a delay. Then I'm going to create a task, set a delay. So I'm just typing or doing random stuff for now just to show you how easy it is to create your own. Triggers. Triggers are the best thing ever. How you would use a trigger. For you as a new agent and or new to Keller Williams, you want to have a email, an introduction or communication, I should say, let me not say email, but you want to have communication for this. Let's say you're in Safeway and you meet someone for the first time, you get, you get to talking and you figure out, you know, that they are looking for a real estate agent because they're looking to sell their home. You need to have on the ready as an agent, a pre-templated smart plan that talks about introduction, like introducing yourself as the agent, your contact information, just a very general, you know, thanks, it was great to meet you, love to work with you, here's my contact information. You need to have something like that already created. Once you create it, you can simply click on add a trigger. So the reason why it's a great option here is because I don't have specifics in there, but once you put all the specifics in there, you can then create a trigger. 
And what the trigger does is this, you create the smart plan, you go into contacts, you add a tag. Remember we talked about tags last time? You add a tag and let's say the tag is, um, I'm your new agent or whatever you wanna call your tag. You create that tag, you add that tag to this. So whenever you meet a person for the first time and you enter them as a contact, you associate that tag to them, it triggers them to this smart plan and it automatically sends it out to them. So that's how you would use a trigger effectively as a best practice to make sure that you're always getting your top of mind to the people, you're getting, you're getting the communication going, you give them all your contact information, your um, cell phone, office phone if you have one, your Twilio number, your website, your you know, your um, branded um, consumer app, just really simple. Here's how you reach out to me. Questions about smart plans in general. Do you see how effective this will be to help you move people or clients from throughout the sales pipeline by being able to automatically communicate? Okay. All right, so let's go to referrals. So I'm just going to say yes, disregard. So now we're gonna go into referrals and let me check my time. We're good, okay. So referrals. So it didn't pop up, so sorry. I don't think the internet here had coffee, so it's like running slow. <laughs> okay, so this is your dashboard for referrals. And so within your referral, um, you can network with, other agents within Keller Williams. I would, if you haven't started this, I would start it as soon as you can because you want to make sure that you're top of mind. I can give you a tip right now. Um, how many of you follow NAR either on Facebook, um, National Association of Realtors, or Instagram? Anyone? I would encourage you to do it. If you are not following NAR, National Association of Realtor, either by Facebook or Instagram, you should do it. And the reason why I'm going to tell you that is I'm actually going to, I'm on my phone now. I'm not texting anybody, so don't uh, get nervous. Um, but NAR just put out, and I'm trying to pull it up so I can make sure I tell you correctly. Their post yesterday, they had a post. And the post said, these 10 large commercial real estate markets attracted the most cross the border capital. So it lists all of the mainland states that have the highest traffic as it relates to across the border capital. So I'm gonna give you these states for a reason. The states are Manhattan, New York, Seattle or, and or cities. Um, so Manhattan is number one, Seattle, San Francisco, Dallas, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Chicago, Denver, Boston, and Phoenix. Again, Manhattan, Seattle, San Francisco, Dallas, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Chicago, Denver, Boston, Phoenix. Why am I telling you this? I would go into your network, search agents in those markets and get to know them so that you can be top of mind to them. So this is why I'm saying you wanna tap into every potential resource to maximize your database, i.e. you wanna get that sale. So reach out to agents in these areas and you know, start a conversation, do some referrals, get out there so that people, so you're known across the KW world and capitalizing on people that are spending money across the border um, in these hot markets. So that's why I'm mentioning that, not because I just wanna tell you that I'm following NAR, but there's a method to my madness. So does that make sense what I'm saying? Okay, so just capitalize on those things. So anytime you hear something, whether you know, you're in a call with your, on a call with your broker or you're hearing something about another market you know, Denver is a hot market right now. Um, Texas is another hot market. People are moving, actually, people are moving from California to Texas. 
for many reasons. So when you hear stuff like that, don't just hear it and don't do anything. Go to your referral and start maximizing that with other agents. Say, hey, you know, if any of your clients ever are looking for a second home or wanting to relocate to Hawaii, I'm your person. Okay. So that's how you would maximize it once you start doing that. So let me walk you through the referral. So here you can either search by the name of the person um, and or area. You can either generate a new referral here or you can send a referral from here if you do a search. So let's see if I can do... So then I just did a Texas one. So then it's gonna show up all these. Um, well, maybe it didn't, out of my network. So then you could send invitations to all of these people. Oh, let me back up because I forgot one step. So then you can do simply, I just typed in and my internet is not allowing me to do that. But essentially you can click on here and you can highlight, you can do a personalized. So basically where this one I clicked on, Mary was my last one. So Mary Alice Holmes, she's in the Texas area, Katy, Texas. Um, so then now I can send a personal message to Mary, you know, hey, this is Kat. You know, I'd love to be your resource on the big island. You know, reach out to me. And then you send the invitation and you just wait for it to come back. So that's how you do it. So these aren't people that you know. These are just people that you're introducing these are yourself people, to yeah these are people within um, Keller Williams that you're introducing yourself to to enlarge your sphere of influence okay yes. thank you and you can do that you know with people on Maui if you're so if you're on Big Island and you want to get to know some agents here you know or even on Oahu or you know Kauai or wherever um as long as they are associated with Keller Williams you can either type the area or their name if you know it and then once it pulls up, so let's do, so then this shows up all of the agents um, so far um, that just automatically popped up. So then if I wanted to send one to Tara, I click on my little contact person. It confirms that Aaron Tara, Tara, Tara is the one that I want to. I send a personal message, hit send, and that's how you do it. All right. Any questions about referrals? Okay. Next, opportunities. This is a big one. So I currently am teaching a class on this. Um, I'll, let's see what my time is. So I think I'm going to try to wrap up um, everything within opportunities. So the class that I am teaching, and we have a part two tomorrow, is essentially how to um, do an opportunity, um, or let me back up, how to maximize the sales pipeline and opportunity. What I mean by that is this, within opportunities, you have um, essentially two key parameters. You've got the listing side and the buyer side. If you're Leases necess don't necessarily come into play unless you're doing property management. So I typically just focus on the listing and buyer side. And so within the listing and buyer side, you are always going to have um, these phases where you have the cultivate, appointment, active, under contract flows. These never change. You cannot change these. These are based on um, Gary Keller's MREA, Miller, um, Millionaire Real Estate Mindset. And so these are based on vetted categories or phases that relate to across the board transactions, whether you're on the listing side or the buyer side, you're always in a cultivate or can be in a cultivate. Um, listing or buyer side, you're always in the appointment the active, the under contract and the close. So those things never change. What changes is the stages. So let me pull this up. So I'm just gonna click on cultivate. So cultivate, you notice that there's a teal underline. If you've been in my training, I'm always gonna tell you teal is your friend. So anytime you see things in teal, that's a good thing. 
So within Cultivate, I have get to know you, nurture, and hot. You can change these stages. The reason why you would want to change them is depending on how you work your business, how you categorize them. So then here, you can, let's say I don't want to say get to know you, I can call it something else. You can simply hit where it says edit stages. And then if I wanted to name this stage something different, I can click on the edit pencil and then I could just edit it right here. Let me go back one more to tell you one thing and be very clear about this. So click on opportunities if you're navigating on your own command. Um, actually, let's do this. Here's the thing that I wanna say. I would encourage you, well, let me take a step back. How many of you have added stages and checklists to your opportunities? Okay. The reason why you would do that is from an automation standpoint, meaning that you wanna get into a rhythm with your clients, meaning you're doing the same exact steps for all of your clients, creating consistency. So on the listing side, what are those steps or things that you need? I will send you a spreadsheet that has all of these phases and stages and checklists so you can use that as a frame for you to customize it to what how you work in your business. Why you would do that is this, you wanna create the same value, offer the same level, high level of customer service to all of your clients consistently every single time. And this allows you to stay on track, meaning that in the cultivate stage, you're always gonna do these three things. In the appointment stage, you're gonna always do these things. In the active stage, you're gonna always do these three things. And you create that consistency so you can have five-star reviews all of the time. So that's the premise behind it. You Once you set your stages and then your checklists, then what you can do is you can automatically send updates to your clients about what you've done. Because a lot of times as an agent, you do a lot of work, not, not sometimes, all the times. You guys do amazing things all the time for your, your clients. And some things they don't necessarily know you're doing for them. It's kind of behind the scenes, all of this stuff. This is a way for you to get it out there hey, these are all of the things that I've done or have done for you so that they know you're working this deal. Because sometimes they don't know where they are in the process. This is a way that you can help them stay on track. So then let's do the, the reason why I want to start from the all of the opportunities is this. So the reason why I'm starting here under the umbrella of opportunities is because when you edit these stages, and you're in the general opportunity, you can then have a checklist that is for everyone, meaning it applies to every client you assign this to. So now I know I'm in the cultivate stage. I'm not in any individual opportunity. You see how I have all of these opportunities? So I know that I'm in overall opportunities. Then you click on edit stages and then from there, these are always going to automatically pop up however you do it. If you wanted to add a checklist, you simply click here. And then my first get to know you stage, going back to that smart plan. Remember, we talked about that introductory smart plan. So then you can put on there, sorry. You can put on there, send introductory smart plan or whatever you call it. If you wanted to do a text message, you could do that. So then you hit save. And then this will um, eventually, and then we'll have to, I'll have to go back in and redo this because I set it up wrong because I was doing some different training for someone else. But once you set it up in general, you can go in and add um, the next checklist. So simply how you do a checklist is you do add item. And then I'm just going to say send update. And then you can click on here where it says client update. Yes, I want to send this as to the client as well, if you want to do that. And then you hit save.
So that would be how you add the checklist. And again, this is in the overall opportunity portion of it. We're gonna add all these checklists. So then eventually these will appear in every contact that we assign it to. When we do that, and let's say this is a client update, let's do this. Let's, um, let's say I'm, let me go back. So let's say there's one thing, there's two things here. And what I wanna do is I wanna be able to send a client the update. So I would click on, so let me actually walk you through this because I wanna make sure I'm clear on this. So then let's pull up this one, Aaron. So now we're in an individual one, hopefully. Oops, there we go. So now we're in the individual opportunity for Aaron. So then I'm gonna click on this. Let's say this zero to three months, I'm done, I did that. So I'm gonna select this as being done. If I select client update, see how that little mail envelope pulled up? What's gonna happen is whenever you do something for your client and you already have this checklist created and you go and cross it off your list and it shows a line through it and then it pops up this email, guess what's gonna happen? Aaron is going to get an email the next morning that says, oh, Kate did this, she did this for you. So it's gonna show up as that email. So let me show you how to customize the email. Questions so far? I know it's a lot, but does it make sense though? I just wanna make sure it makes sense what I'm saying. Okay, so how you customize this, going back to our black horizontal toolbar, we're gonna to go to the drop down. We're going to go into um, settings, or actually there's another way that we can do it. Um, let's do this. Let me go, let me stay in opportunities as not to confuse you. So sorry about that. So then within opportunities again, you see this gear over here, we're gonna click on the gear. So then now it says we're in opportunities and we are in the client update. So if you are on a team, your team will pop up here. I wanna be on my solo agent. If you're a solo agent, no team, no need. I'm just calling that out for people that are on a team, but you want to make sure you're in the solo agent portion of it. So you would set this up in terms of when, whenever you are sending something to a client in terms of the opportunity side of it, when do you want this to send out? So do you want to do it like eight o'clock every day or whatever it is? So then you would set up the time. The owner would be you. Is this the client and co-client? Um, best practice is to select client and co-client. Then that way, if you have a husband and wife or you know a couple partners, it sends the update to both of them, not just one of them. Or if you want to do primary, whatever you want to do. And then you also want to CC yourself so you know that the email went out. And then right now, there's only one option. Eventually, we'll be able to do customizable um, templates. So then you click on preview and this is how it will look. It'll show up whatever your KW logo you have here, your contact information, your avatar picture. It'll say, you know, whoever the client is, we're checking things off for you. Make sure that you have the property associated with this person. The, the image of the property will show up and then it will show them whatever the items that were checked off. And this, this email automatically goes off, or excuse me, goes out, and then it'll have your contact information. Then it'll have a call out about download my app in case they need to do that. So that's how this would look. Go back to opportunities for a minute, because remember it showed you that little picture? Remember that? So let me go back to that to make sure. So in this case, I'm actually going to, I think I did, Let's see, I think it was under contract. I'll show you. No, I think it was that one. Hold on just a minute. 
There was one that I did as a test and I wanna, can't remember where it was. Oh, here it is, okay. So this is the one that I was playing around with in terms of the client updates for opportunities. So I clicked on this. When this is the listing side. So whenever you're moving someone through the sales pipeline, you know, um, they've already, let's say they've already made the offer on the property the, and you're going through that process of the escrow process, you want to make sure that you attach that listing. And what's going to happen is once you attach the listing and it has the images from MLS or whatever your, um, your region um, connector is or the name of your board, it's going to pre-populate all of those images to where it's going to do a custom image of that specific property. So that's why you want to make sure that when you're maximizing the opportunities that you have the actual property connected to it um, so that it, it's real for them um, in terms of that sales, maximizing that sales pipeline. You know? So you can send these out without it but definitely once an offer has been accepted, you wanna make sure you associate, you know, either on the buyer side, what property, you know, they're, they're wanting to buy and or the listing side, what property. Um, so then that way it just makes it more tangible and they can see, hey, this is a reminder, this is the house that I'm buying or this is the house that I'm selling or whatever. So it's just that really extra touch point on that. So- And that, where, did, where did you go to add that? So you would go into- property. Yeah, let me do one that I haven't done to make sure we're all clear. So let's go to, on the listing side, I'm gonna go into appointment and I'm just gonna play around, I'm gonna do Adam. So now I'm in Adam's contact card. Oh, I did one for him, sorry. I'm trying to find one that I haven't done. So hold on just one second. I don't think I did one for her. Ah, I did. Hold on. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is one, this is a test one. So I went into the specific opportunity for Robert. So this is on the listing side. So see where it says select from listings up here? So then I would select that. And then you can either search by address or MLS or whatever, you know, um, so realtor association you have according to your island. So I'm just gonna do address. And then here, the other thing I want to call out is whenever you're searching and you don't find what you're looking for, the first thing you want to check is here. To the right, does everyone see where it says only my listings? Make sure you deselect that or select the right one, because if you don't have any listings and you try to search other listings, it's going to say no results because you're on this mode of only my listings. So I simply click on this and I say all listings, and then it populates everything. So then you could just do a search by um, address. So I'm just going to do Maui, or actually I'm going to do Big Island. Let's see what pops up. Um, I guess I need to clarify Big Island Hawaii. And I know there's stuff on the Big Island. Let me do Kilo. Okay, so here's one, and I think it's just a land deal, but let's just say we want to do that. Well, I'm trying to see if I can find one. Well, let's just do this one for now so you can see. So then now that listing, simply by selecting, that listing is associated. And you remember that picture that showed up? That's the picture that when you send this out, that's the picture that they're going to see. So they're gonna see that picture because this is the land they're purchasing or the land they're selling, reminding them of that and all of the check things or the check marks or the tasks that you've done for that property. So I know it's a lot of information, um, but I wanted to call that piece out of it. Then we'll also talk about, let's see, for a sake of time, we've got a few minutes left. So what we'll do is we'll pick back up next time the actual commission side of it, but I wanted to share a little bit of how you can create back-end systems in opportunities so that you can maximize the sales process. And so I'm gonna have a, a part two that goes into more detail tomorrow. And you can always either log in and watch it 
or it'll be on the YouTube channel. Um, you can get, get the link that way. But this is something that's underutilized by our agents. A lot of agents are not using this. And this is a bulletproof CRM for you. Bulletproof CRM. Questions? Uh, what time tomorrow? 1.30. 1.30. 1.30 to 30 minutes. Okay. And it'll be the same link that we use to get in here today? Exactly. Yep. Same. Okay. Well, actually not the same link for today, but let me do this while I have you. Give me one minute and I'm going to stop share and I'm going to actually give you the link in the chat. So hold on. Copy. All right, so I'm putting it in the chat right now. So that's the link to register. Great, thank you. Was this beneficial? Did you get anything out of today? Yeah, it's for me personally, it's one of those things I'm gonna have to play with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, I'm for here sure, to help. For sure. oh, Kat, did you yeah. have anything you wanted to add or say or no? Um, no, I'm just gonna try to do some of this stuff too. <laughs> it's a lot. I know it's, it's, you know, the Keller Williams way of drinking out a fire hydrant. Um, <laughs> but I'm here to help you if need be, but hopefully it's, it's valuable content that you can eventually utilize. So. For sure. For sure. For sure. Hey, I have, a, yeah, yeah. I have, a, is there a way, is there a, um, I haven't really played with my app very much. Is there, I'm sure that there's information in the, my drive somewhere. So the best place to get like videos, if you're looking for videos, um, I would go to the YouTube channel or go to YouTube and I would type in uh, Marty Miller. And then just in that search field, I would do, um, you know, Kelly app or consumer app. And then all of the stuff that he's taught on the app would show up. And another resource would be Scott Leroy. Him and his team okay. do an amazing job of video. So then you can also go to YouTube, type in Scott Leroy Marketing, go to the channel, do, do a search and just say, you know, app or um, KW Consumer App. And then all of the training that they've done, you can, you can okay. do it that way. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. So thanks for um, joining me. And um, part three will be next week, same time. And um, we'll finish up opportunities and then we'll wrap up the other apps. Cool. And awesome. designs. We'll focus on designs um, heavily and campaigns next time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Hello, ladies.